Each one of us has to discover his own path. In this particular sutra, Nanak continues to explain various paths that lead to God. There are numerous ways to reach to that which is. However, each one of us has to discover his own path. And where does it emerge from? It emerges from deep within you. In, in the search for God, you have to follow the same route through which God has reached the world of duality. There is a process that God became the creation. Once you know this, then your journey has to become in reverse direction. The route, the way to reach to a particular room and to come out of that is the same. Only the direction is to be changed. When you are going to that room, you are facing towards the room and you are back is okay. When you are coming back from the room, your back is facing towards that room as a destination and you are facing the opposite direction. Every day you go from homes to various destinations, office, schools, market, etc. You follow the route to reach your destination. Now to return home, you have to use the same route. The route will remain the same. The same route takes you to your destination and then the same route brings you back from destination to home. Then what is the difference? The difference is of direction. Facing your des destination, when you follow the route, you reach to your destination. So for returning home, you have to be facing the home. Then your back faces the destination that was once your destination. It is simple logic. The same has to be followed when you have to go into the way of innerness. The way God reaches the creation, that is the way you have to follow. While coming you are facing the world and your way, your back was facing the God. Now this has to be reversed. You have to be facing God and your back has to be facing the world of duality. In this sutra, Nanak explains how God became the creation. This is true even about those who have attained to God. This is true not only about mystics, instead about scientists as well. Both science and religion agree on this point. Religion searches the creator, science searches the creation. Religion searches from one side, science searches from another side. The search of the science begins from where you are and the religion searches the source from where you have come. Your beginning and end is the search of religion. Science is the discovery of that which lies between these two shores, that which is in the middle. The most significant discovery of the science is that the entire creation is composed of one element. Science calls this atom as electricity. Electricity is energy. This energy is the essence of the entire existence. Everything is composed of electrical energy particles and religion calls this as God. For science, this is energy. The difference is only of the world. However, this is the major difference. How can you worship electricity? How can you fall in love with electricity? How can you call electricity? How would you create the temples of electricity to pray? Your mind can get connected to electricity. Your heart cannot get connected to electricity. God is the name for the same energy. Name makes the 
difference. The moment you use word God, there is a possibility of heart-to-heart -heart connection. Mind creates barriers, mind divides, heart unites, with heart boundaries disappear. The moment religion calls that energy God, that very moment you have given it an individuality. Now you can get connected. Everything depends on relations. That which you get connected to can really transform you. Science uses that energy. Religion worships that energy. That is the basic difference. Religion worships that energy. Science uses that energy. Science can reach that energy in far places. Science can transform that energy into atomic energy. In the life of science, no flowers can ever blossom. So too, religion cannot bring light to each village. Religion cannot create atom bombs. Religion can certainly bring light to your heart. Light is far-reaching. Religion can fill each heart with a song. Religion can bring a dance to your heart. In relation, there is a tacit con consent. The world of duality came into existence out of this tacit consent. When one composes, it creates three. When world of duality this is how the world of duality came into existence. Because for connection you need two. So one got divided into two. Duality came into existence. And duality became three. Science says electricity composed into three components. Electron, proton and neutron. The entire world of duality is composed of these three particles. So too, religion says one becomes two. It is referred in Hinduism as Hindu Trinity or Christian Trinity. Hindus create a trinity. It has three faces. Deep within there is only one face. If you look at the coin, it is dualistic. It has two faces. The two faces, head and tail, somewhere in an invisible space they merge into one another and when they merge into one another they are one deep within there is one face these three faces are according to hindus brahma the creator vishnu the preserver shiva the destroyer when we look into cosmos hydrogen the percentage of it is the highest it is explosive this represents this Shiva aspect. Then comes nitrogen that creates the balance N. This is known as in Hindu trinity as the Vishnu aspect. Then comes Brahma the creator. Creator K. Nitrogen, hydrogen and carbon. Everything is a derivative of carbon in the cosmos and carbon starts with K the sound and Brahma's the creator his one name is K is strangely the meaning that Hindus gave to Trinity is the same as science gave to its Trinity the entire process to complete birth is needed and for birth a creator is needed. Father and mother, they are the creator to compose, to create the body. And that which is born must die and for that too, one who destroys is needed. And there is time between the birth and death. This span has to be preserved. And as usual, for preserving again, someone is needed as preserver. Brahma holds the sutras the principle for creation. Vishnu is the sutra for preserving or sustenance and Shiva is the sutra for destruction. Thus completes the saga of that comes into existence. 
is sustained as long as it is needed and then the dissolution or the exit begins. These are the attributes of scientific trinity as well. One remains at the base and creates, the other sustains and the last one takes the process of destruction. One is divided into three and then three gets divided into infinite. So if the journey has to begin towards God, then you have to move from many to three first and then you can attain to one from three to one. You are moving along the river against its flow towards its origin. You are lost in many. Infinite desires and infinite lust surrounds you in every way. There are infinite choices. These lust and desires are like new leaves that keep on growing on the trees. And the process never comes to an end. You may acquire as many resources as you wish, but the desires will never come to an end. The more you have, you will move away from the path and so will increase your sorrows. As you start moving away from the very source of life, the darkness will increase. To be amidst many implies that you are still far away from one. You are part of this duality, this is world. One who moves from many to three is an aspirant. One who moves from many to three is an aspirant. His inward journey has now begun. He is in the middle. And one who moves from three to reach to one is called the one who is on the way to attain. He has now reached his source. Now try to understand this. How would you move from many to three? The technique to move from many to three is called witnessing. I am not saying to abandon your desires and lust. In the beginning it will be difficult and any effort to, sup to suppress will be disastrous. Do whatever you are doing. However, let there be witnessing. You like to have your wardrobe full of dresses. Go on buying each time when a new dress comes. But let there be a witnessing at the background. When you are seeing a new dress, you are get attracted to it, you are going to buy it. Then you bring it and hang it in the cupboard. Look at your cupboard that it is full of all latest design clothes. Be a witness. Be a witness to all that you are doing. You simply watch that this act is happening for certain reasons. There is a desire in you to have the latest and the branded clothes in your cupboard upon watching. You simply watch that this act is happening for certain reasons. You are not the doer. The moment the sense of doer disappears, witnessing happens. Witnessing is the way to move from many to three. There are many ways to involve through desires and lust in the world of objects and beings. I am doing, I am enjoying. Such are the ways of getting scattered into many. You can be a witness to your happiness and sorrow. Immediately you are away from many to three. What happens when someone attains to witnessing? The moment you start witnessing, your happiness and sorrow is reduced to three. The three are, and who are these three? One who is witnessing that which you are witnessing, the scene, and that which happens between the two. You have a branded list, latest design dress in your cupboard. This is the scene. You are seeing it. And in between the two, the act of seeing is happening. 
you have moved away from three the many to three the moment you are able to witness you are an aspirant you can do anything maybe walking on the road eating sleeping running maybe you are going through many situations in life like happiness sorrow winning a lottery there is only one thing that you need to take care and that is witnessing witnessing means you are not involved instead you are watching your own shoe something you have acted you know the entire sequence of events and you are watching your own shoe you can really watch and be the witness allow that to disappear or slip from your hands that was never yours you can lose anything but never lose your witnessing it is most important i have heard mulla nasruddin's attendant used to serve him every morning with two glasses of wine i asked mulla what is this you are alone in the room and for whom this second glass of wine is but mulla said is relevant this explains the functioning of the ego when i take the first cup of drink i am a different person when i take the first cup of drink i am a different person and this other cup is for the second person that has now born in me as soon as you are intoxicated you are a different person whether you are intoxicated for the world or for the beyond intoxication widens gap between what you were before intoxication and what you have reduced to after intoxication and what is intoxication the greatest of all intoxication is ego all other intoxications are short lived however the intoxication of ego continues for lives for lives you want to leave but it remains all your efforts to leave free you pretend humility yet still it remains like the undercurrent the intoxication of ego is subtlest witnessing is waking and ego is sleep as soon as the doer ego comes in and you are asleep now and as soon as witnessing comes in you are awake as soon as you are awake many disappears and you are free nanak calls this state as truputi means the state of three nanak calls this as teen ban and one who attains to this state is an aspirant as you move from many to three your awareness starts getting established it does not move away any more as this begins three will reduce to one you will come to realize now the subject the object and which and that which happens again and again says the observer is the you come to realize that now the subject the object and that which happens between the two the barrier has now vanished jidu krishna murti again and again says the observer is the observer in the ultimate moment three reduce to one as the journey continues you come to realize that in utter wakefulness when your inner eyes open you reach to oneness in this oneness all relationships vanish relationships happen as long as there are two when two are no more there is only oneness and this oneness and in this oneness all that is infinite dissolves this is the journey way back home the moment you are one god is born in you contrary to this when you are lost amidst many you are in the world of duality 
and Trinity is in between, and Nana continues. This is the way to move from one, from many to three, and three to one. In the beginning, there was oneness, God. God created you, duality, you and God. Then, out of you, many were born, like the spider's web. You have to reverse this process. This process continues.